Good evening, everybody. I'm Danilo Evangelista, and welcome to the Hurricane Hub discussion for today, May 18th, 2023. Let's get on right with it, shall we? Going into the National Hurricane Center. Gotta refresh the page, going back to the home page. Um, but generally, this the idea is the same as the last few days. Nothing expected within the next 48 hours or the next seven days in the Atlantic to be expected. It's May. And of course, the same situation occurs in the Pacific as well. Nothing really going on yet um, over the next seven days or, of course, the next 40 hours too. Not really relevant since the seven days is also quiet. But here is a taking a look at the satellite image of the Atlantic, and it basically reinforces the same thing. A lot of strong upper-level winds um, and also a lot of cloud cover gathering over the southeast United States will talk about that in a little bit, but interesting, very strong convective blow up over Texas, probably something related to thunderstorms and severe weather. We'll also go over that later on as well, but still when it comes to tropical development, you see a lot of these strong upper level winds cutting um, pretty, pretty quickly from west to east, and that is indicative, as I've been talking about, of strong upper level winds, so until that occurs, nothing will, until that calms down, I should say, nothing really of interest will occur in the Atlantic and same situation occurring for the East and Pacific. It's still very early on and things are still yet to change. But I did mention off the Southeast coast, you do see, very interestingly enough, we have some cloud cover um, kind of getting going. This will be involved with the system that could potentially bring heavy rain to um, the Carolinas. Um, for the next week or so and then possibly stretching beyond that. I mean, this is kind of relevant actually to tracking because we were talking about, if you remember, several days ago about the models potentially showing something, try to spin up. Guess now as we get closer in time, it looks like it'll hug a lot closer to the coast. So we'll probably not see as much development as we saw before. Or maybe all this was just convective feedback from the GFS and we probably were not expecting this to really develop into any sort of, any sort of tropical or subtropical entity anyways. But tropical or not, this is going to bring rain and heavy winds either, heavy winds either way. Um, and um, this is the graphic from the Weather Prediction Center. I might almost blanked out for a second, but I'm back. Uh, the Weather Prediction Center. Uh, showing and you can see so over the next week or so very strong um, not strong very heavy rainfall over the next week or so this goes out from this is an average of the next seven days days one to seven this is the expected rainfall and we could see totals going as much as, as possible up to five maybe seven inches right near the coast of the Carolinas this is all going to be part of a system that Thing is actually going to stall for a little bit this system right here some sort of frontal situation going on expecting a lot of rain there and as i said before it does extend even further than that the climate prediction center is taking note of this potentially being um something to watch for in terms of rainfall and this could go up to impact a uh, memorial day weekend so if you have any travel plans for the southeast of the carolinas want to take that into consideration it's going to be pretty rainy not the best weather i guess you would say and um you could also see here slight risk for precipitation across generally the southeast stretching anywhere from the carolinas all the way down to florida unfortunately um but of course you can't control mother mother nature of course and then we have right by the carolinas coast a moderate chance for heavy precipitation to occur um, and then, of course, with the risk of high winds as well, this is, once again, still some sort of system that we're watching. Um, not Probably not going to do anything in tropical nature, so I don't have to worry about that. But still, risk of high winds as well, possible. High, wind, um, high winds, heavy rain, all stuff that we could see without tropical systems. And, of course, um, it is still May as well, so no really need to worry about anything being tropical. But still... It is relevant to talk about it because it's part of weather and it's part of sometimes whether that'll occur, whether it's in tropical season or not. So always important to mention it, especially since it relates to us here in the U.S. So why not mention it? 
anyways taking a look at the sea surface temperatures in the entire western atlantic um we took a look at if you remember i showed you the sea surface temperatures uh several days ago that was a different map though this that was from noah i believe the noah nesdis this map is from the CDAS, and sometimes I go back and forth between those two maps. I always like to look at different maps to see, you know, different views on how things look, but the general idea is the same. Very warm Gulf, 26, almost the entire Gulf is being surrounded by 26 degrees Celsius water, and it's actually starting to warm up quite a bit in the northern Gulf with sea surface temperature anomalies too, so that's becoming a thing. Off the southeast coast though, 24, 23 right off the coast, and then the loop current extends all the way up to the Carolinas roughly a few miles off the coast so I guess if you want to kind of go out from the Carolinas and then go out to let's say not really good not really that good with geography but maybe 50 60 miles off the coast and then kind of um, tip your toe in the water you'll definitely get into very warm waters or you can just go all the way down to Florida they have waters solidly off their coast off southeast Florida 27 degrees Celsius and if you want to go even further to the Keys they extend all the way up into the 28 29 degrees Celsius mark and that is starting to get really into the very warm upper 80s low 90s and especially when once that surrounds the Gulf um, the entire Gulf by the time we get to peak summer you wouldn't really have to worry at all about whether or not whether or not the Gulf is warm enough for um, hurricane development because the Gulf will always be warm whether it's El Nino or La Nina it'll always be prepared for um, the development of a strong storm that's how that's just how the Gulf works the loop current of course unless there's some sort of weather situation that we see a cooler Gulf but usually by the time we get to the summer that doesn't happen it's all about you know conditions the conditions atmospherically being right for a storm to take advantage of it something very important to keep in mind and really quickly very warm off the pacific coast i mean we are still expecting el nino anyway but still very warm 30 even 31s off the coast of mexico so very ripe there for development when of course it does occur the water temperatures though across the atlantic as a whole including the tropical atlantic they're also very warm Heck, look at that. We're even by uh, the Cabo Verde Islands, <clears throat> and we see 26 degrees Celsius um, almost stretching to there, and even a few 26 degrees Celsius marks um, through the, the heart of the central MDR stretching all the way up. Um, around 40 degrees west, we see 26 degrees Celsius markings. Just goes to show how warm the Atlantic is, and then right by the islands, look at that. 28s even stretching up to 29s across the island so very warm indeed um there um and that just goes to show the atlantic is very warm it is very primed of course although especially once we get closer towards 60 west this season might see a little bit more restrainment when it comes to development because we're still expecting el nino but still nonetheless atlantic is very warm and it'll probably stay that way all the way through um the peak but very interesting, I wanted to show really quickly a graph of how it looks over Africa, since of course that is, that is beginning to light up with tropical wave activity. I believe this was one that just came off the coast not long ago. This one is probably a developing one, I would assume that's coming off, and then there's one developing, I think that's right near South Sudan or something like that, but that's a developing tropical wave, I do believe. Um, definitely already we're seeing quite a bit of tropical wave activity. i um, not going to say that, you know, it's not completely unexpected that we have tropical waves in May. I mean, the African easterly jet is beginning to pick up and we are expecting a strong African monsoon after all. I mean, just look at how warm the sea surface temperatures are in the Atlantic and also climate models as well. Um, but either way, Africa will definitely get very interesting. And we'll, you know, we'll go over these maps a little more as we get um, closer towards the season and really take a look at how this begins to light up because it will be very interesting to see how these waves develop once they get into the Atlantic and see how they interact and see if we get any sort of interesting activity there. But really quickly before we end, just want to take a look at the Storm Prediction Center. And yeah, as I did say, and as I did think the, that convective burst near texas that we saw earlier very powerful one some severe weather expected today slight risk of severe weather tornadoes is not really much of a threat it's and wind as well only five percent there i guess the main threat to watch is for hail for today 
and then we get towards day two a much wider area over central and eastern texas and also stretching into i believe arkansas as well slight risk there winds is at two percent the uh the wind is at 15 percent i mean the tornado risk is at two percent because i think it's only the tornado risk that has a two percent um probability um i guess forecast that's only the tornado risk that has it the wind is at is up to 15 percent and then the hail is up to 15 so maybe more of a wind hail event rather than a tornado event always good that the tornado the tornado probability is less and then we have a marginal risk for um severe weather across the southeast probably just some thunderstorms by the time we get to day three and then after that the the potential or the predictability is too low so not much in the severe weather department there of course severe weather season is beginning to die out jet stream lifting north we're moving away from that kind of spring unstable pattern that we usually have so of course that is expected and very soon we'll be talking about tropical activity i would imagine since we are of course getting every day or so closer to june so of course we'll always be interested when that does occur but anyways that does wrap up today's discussion of course very quick very brief straight to the point um because of course there's nothing a lot to talk about really but of course always still interested to you know keep up on what's going on daily and eventually we will have something to talk about but until then uh stay safe um if you haven't subscribed already i strongly encourage you to do so and share with family and friends you know really get the community going and with that being said i'll see you guys for our discussion tomorrow bye